Extinction event. It's time to rebel. To my gas! Burning forests! To burning forests! To polluting waters! To polluting waters! Contaminating the air! Contaminating the air! Killing the children! Killing our children! Boiling our babies! Boiling our babies!
Sainsbury van here, which we don't want in the background for the protest. So, could we have maybe tw 20 people?
quick introduction to, to why we're here to speak loud and clear to our public service broadcaster that there is a climate emergency upon us and an extinction crisis. So it's, I think it's a little like when you go and see your friend and you put your hand on their shoulder and say, look, I, I really love you, but we've got to talk about something. Um, now, there will be some ceremony to today and some ritual, and um, I'm just going to be very brief and introduce somebody who's going to explain the sort of running of the day and the message that we're, that we're here to present. Uh, here's, here's Donica. Welcome to the Extinction Rebellion! Fellow rebels! Fellow earth protectors! Fellow factivists! Fellow BBC friends! We assemble here today in rebellion to mourn, to invoke, and to act. Why are we mourning? We see in front of us today 27 symbolic bodies representing the families that were found gathered in a circle in a dead end in the village of Mati this summer in the Greek wildfires, victims of climate change. We, will, we will come here to mourn the 200 people burned to death in wildfires in Greece and California. We come here to mourn the 315,000 people the United Nations say have died this year and every year for the last five years from droughts, from fires, from disease, from floods across the planet from the impacts of the climate emergency. We are also mourning the vast numbers of insects, animals, plants, vertebrates and, 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 and amphibians that have been burned to death and drowned in those terrible natural catastrophes. We mourn what's happening to nature and the 60% we've destroyed in my lifetime. And I'd like a 30 second silence for the victims of Mati. Thank you. But we're not here to just mourn. We're here to invoke. We're here to invoke the BBC to step up to its public service duty and act as they did in the Second World War, as a public service, uh, service to send out the information and calls to the people of Britain and across the planet to use the immense resources of the BBC to enable humanity to rise up and change our behaviour, to cut our carbon emissions to zero, as the Extinction Rebellion says, by 2025. We invoke the BBC. What must the BBC do? Say after me. The BBC must change. The BBC must change. Last time and louder. BBC must change. The BBC must change. And it's not just the BBC. Extinction Rebellion here are invoking and calling to all the media present, to all the media around Britain, all the media around the world. We need you. Extinction Rebellion summons you, invokes you to stand with us, 
rebel. Tell the people of the world to rebel against the fossil fuel empire, destroying nature and destroying humanity. A call must come out today from here, the headquarters of the BBC, to the heads of the, me heads of the media across the world. 60 men and maybe two women. You have immense power to summon and invoke humanity, and we call you today to do so. The first call is at the BBC. Because the BBC is our BBC. Whose BBC is it? Who's BBC? So what is the case against the BBC? For years they have ignored and downplayed the crisis. The recent analysis of the budget was silent. The BBC's analysis of the budget, which had nothing on climate, was silent. There's a story on the BBC News this week that was excitedly talking about the doubling of airports in China with no mention of the horrific climate price it would pay. There was a story on the three, BC, three counties where the presenter was delighted at the heat this year in Britain from the climate crisis. The BBC is pumping out social permission for driving with Top Gear, is promoting drive time. So finally, we're here for action. The third word is action. Non-violent, peaceful, direct action. Peaceful disruption. Why? Because the complacency of the BBC and in the country and the government and business and the people has to be moved. And that's why I hear the final reason we're here for is action. Action from the BBC on divestment. It's horrific that they have 18 million pounds invested in the fracking bank Barclays. They have 28 million bill. ancient Britain and across the, the Europe there was an ancient ritual called beating the bounds where the community went around their land making noise invoking the spirit for blessings on the land so it may be fertile so we're taking this thank you wind we're taking wind power Yay! so we're taking this ritual to symbolize our BBC making noise, we're going to go around the boundary of the BBC, invoking the spirits, banning the demons of the fossil fuels, and invoking the BBC to stand up and make noise on climate and save us from extinction, save nature from extinction. So I'm going to hand over to Bex, who's going to lead us on that. Thank you. Rebellion. We're looking at the extinction of us and our species, but also that extinction of our wild nature self, our wild nature self that was connected to each other and to the earth, knowing that the earth is not our sewer or supply house, it's our larger body. So we stand here in honour of all that is sacred. Sacred because that which cannot be bought or sold. The earth that allows you to stand up here now with your very structure 
Earth, know your honoured here. The air that is our breath, that is our life. The air that has the quality of communication, of cutting through. And that is what is needed now today, BBC. The power of the air. Honour this. Honour cutting through and seeing beyond that which is in front of you. Air, know you are honoured here. And fire. Fire, the heat of the sun.
future. My school and teachers know about some of the issues as we have asked, but they are doing nothing to teach us about it. We need climate collapse and our potential extinction to be at the heart of every lesson and every action the school makes. But it but at the moment it is nowhere. The amount of single-use plastic my school uses is absolutely horrifying. There are mountains and mountains of plastic piling up in the bins at the end of break and lunchtime. They are full of single-use knives and forks, containers, plastic bottles and sheets. This is because it is cheaper for the school to buy these items than it is for them to pay for somebody to wash the metal cutlery. In one of my classes, we are taking a trip to the city centre. It is only a mile's walk and my teachers have decided to make us use a coach. They are, they, are, 
are doing this because it is apparently safe for us. Not truthfully. The coach will damage our little lungs for practically the rest of our lives. Also, walking won't emit any carbon into the atmosphere, whereas getting a coach would. So much for being safe. <laughs> the BBC are not covering this terrible situation enough. Earlier yesterday, I was speaking to one of my teachers and I told her that I was coming to speak at the Extinction Rebellion protest. She said, well done to me, and that she was thankful that I was doing it. And I explained to her why I was doing it. And she replied to me with, that is a really good thing to be doing, as the BBC are very biased towards their own beliefs. I love the BBC, and I love to watch the programmes that they put on their television channels. I particularly enjoy watching the programmes about wildlife, but to save the wildlife we all love so much, they need to start changing so that they can inform people of the dangers we all face within my future, within all of our futures. I would like to finish by saying that I think it would be fun and incredibly enjoyable to live to the end of my natural life. Thank you so much, Scarlett. I think it's amazing that we're here hearing the voices of our young people. I think it's clear that Extinction Rebellion is being mirrored in the school strikes that are happening all across the world today and have been happening every Friday. So I'd like to ask another young person to come and speak to us, and I think they might give us a song. This is Asha. and I'm 12 years old and I took the time off school today to support this cause. I'm very passionate about saving the world and my future um, and I wrote a song today to show how like passionate about I am about this. This is called If You Want to Save the World and I'm sorry for using my phone. I only just wrote this this morning. So.
So I think art has been a huge part of the Extinction Rebellion. We are seeing inspiring, powerful creativity on our streets over the last months. And we've got some more people who have disrupted around the back of the BBC. So if we could have 10 people go and support those people who have now dis made another disruption around the back of the BBC. That would be amazing if 10 people want to go out. Can I see some, some hands, maybe an affinity group that's been to a training? Okay, great. I see. Memorandum on standing with the China. They want to bring Big Brother to force a coal based power plant within the foreign kilometers of the forest and approve more than 300 industrial plots that will destroy. And we're going to sing to the BBC now. This is Jess who's going to teach us all a song. civil servant, I uh, had quite a senior position, I was positively vetted to work with government ministers and um, I understand what it is to uh, respect the law and, and do what we're supposed to do in life but we are facing an extinction. Now I left the civil service nine odd years ago and since then I've dedicated my time to tackling environmental destruction and um, I, I just formed a general opinion about the BBC a few years ago that it was perhaps maybe a little bit right wing um, and it sort of followed an agenda perhaps uh, adopted by the Daily Mail because I picked up um, 
a few years ago that they weren't reporting things, perhaps covering things up in the same way that maybe the Daily Mail would, but socially progressive papers, Independent, Guardian, they were...
to introduce you to Hester, who's another young person who's joined us here today. She's going to speak to you now. Either, but it's just as young people, we're the people that climate breakdown and all the climate changes are going to affect the most. We're the people that our futures are going to be changed by this. But yet we're the people who have the least voice in this. We're the people who have the least decision-making power in what's going to happen to the world, and that's not right. And I just wanted to say that that needs to change, and that we need to be given a means of learning what's happening, learning what we can do to stop it from happening and finding a way to all work together to a future where we can all live in a sort of ambient way with the world around us. I'd also like to say that when the government talk about youth work and youth services... around all sides of the BBC and they're calling out for more people to go and support them to continue the disruption that's going on today. We are taking peaceful, non-violent... So we're here to tell... We're here to tell the BBC to tell the truth and I've got... ...are aware of the trouble and they are terrified. And what do we have from the BBC? A thundering silence about how we're feeling. and the earth it's it's us we're consuming it's not the police's fault they're also consumers the BBC we have asked very clearly for the BBC to listen they're a broadcast organization they are a public organization no have you seen any other cameras there's independent media. I've seen a lot of great people creating, sending messages all over the world. But are there the established media telling the story? Even the media that are competing with BBC. They're not here showing the story of the century. The story of the century. Here's a relatively small group of people who are telling... you know, outside here, and um, basically one uh, guy came around and said, Jeremy Vine is on live at the moment talking about the climate and could we come in? So eight of us went over to um, be interviewed live with Jeremy Vine on Radio 2. So, uh, yes. so we got a few words in, we only had two and a half minutes on live, but what I really wanted to tell people about during that live um, show was the youth strike that's happening on the 15th of February. So we're coordinating with Fridays for Future.
informing and educating our public about what's going on, about the serious loss of life that we're already experiencing, and the fact that we might be entering the next mass extinction, have funded and have investment still in the fossil fuel industry, which is risking all of our lives. give us the logistics, give us some fundings and we can create a sustainable future. We need the media to be covering those solutions and we need spaces to make those solutions happen. Thank you very much Tony Hall. Let's see a lot more environmental programming from the BBC.
This is BBC London calling. You're gathered here on the 21st of December 2018 to inform you that this is a climate emergency. We invite you now to participate in honouring the 315,000 deaths that happen related to climate change. We are doing this now, symbolically, with 27 symbolic bodies, representing those 27 who were killed in the forest fires in the village of Mati in Greece. They arrived at a cul-de-sac. There was nowhere for them to go. And together, they died, burnt alive in a circle. So on this 21st of December, which is our winter solstice day, Winter Solstice Eve, the darkest night, we acknowledge that we are in, indeed, very, very dark times. This is also the time, one night before the full moon in Cancer, which is also known as the new moon, the moon of death and rebirth. At this first heart in honouring, these deaths, we honour the dark time of 2018. This is a time to honour our losses, to mourn what needs to be mourned, to accept those setbacks, and then as we move into the lighter time in silence, all in a circle gathered around. Please hold your candles, don't light them yet. If you've already lit
Come forward, take some ashes, and you'll be scattering them around. <coughs> So this morning we began with a beating of the bounds, reclaiming not just our extinct species of ourselves, but those extinct species that all have been lost to climate change or threatened by climate change. And we've asked the BBC to step forward to honour their capacity to be able to share that which is not immediately right in front of us, that which necessarily we can't necessarily see immediately in front of us. On this longest, darkest night, we really, really ask for them to help us show the way, show the truth of the situation. that we accept any setbacks that have happened and we'd like to honour this path of the chance of solstice and rebirth of starting in a new way and a new beginning in 2019. So in order to do that, like when we were beating the bounds, we used some of the lines from Chief Seattle's speech, which was, this we know, the earth does not belong to us. We belong to the earth. Our breath is the same breath. We are part of the earth and it is part of us. If the beasts were gone, we would die of a great loneliness of spirit. So honouring this interconnection and as that very beautiful young 12 year old said, it's about and there is a Hawaiian grief, a ritual which is called the Hopopono, where they honour this by saying, I'm sorry, please forgive me. And they say that twice within this song. To the police, to the corporations, to everybody, acknowledging we're all part of the problem and we're all part of sing it to the whole world too and then we'll come back and sing it to each other here present okay so three times it's Please forgive me I love you
cute. Doggy the sack. <laughs> There's another one over there. This girl's got a doggy in her back.